We have called ourselves brothers and sisters of sorrow because we are the brothers and sisters of the unremitting sorrow of earth. And why do we describe it as sorrow, my friends? It is due to the increasing heartfelt suffering and woe experienced by those who have attempted repeatedly, over and over, to awaken within the dream of incarnation, to remember who they are and why they are here, and to take hold of their intention to become fully conscious and awakened creatures of love. The yearning has not died at all among your peoples. It cries out in its yearning to be a part of the awakening to love that the very planet under your feet is experiencing. Yet again and again there has been the seduction from love to fear, from unity to disharmony, and from that incredible experience of working truly together for common goals to the voices of division and hostility. You have, in fact, through repeated exercises which have ended in empire, warfare and division, been trammeled and beaten down by those which have seized power and leadership upon your sphere to the point where your entire planetary sphere has been placed out of the normal stream of time slash space and space slash time onto what this instrument calls a time lateral. It is a kind of shunt where a train can move away from the main track until it is repaired. Your planet, in short, is undergoing repair and this not simply from one or two repetitions of empire but from, let us say, at least half a dozen majestic and substantial experiments in empire. Again and again those entities within your population who are inspired by the one infinite creator have called the people of this planet to the reality of your unity as humankind to their planetary responsibility, each for the other, in love. These clarion calls to ethics, virtue, and the higher morality have been heard and many are those who have been inspired to seek the one creator and service to that creator. Yet again and again the forces of fear have seduced entities enough away from the hewing to the light that the light has been unable to establish the kind of energy within your planetary sphere which would begin to accumulate mass of a spiritual kind, of gravity of, again, a spiritual kind or metaphysical kind. At this point, the time allotted for such a time lateral is through within the next very few years. The opportunity for graduation to be a part of fourth density, positive Gaia shall be over. We rejoice to say that this final effort of those who are ruled by fear and who wish to create what this instrument would call Armageddon has failed. This time, although the vast majority upon the surface of your planet are deeply confused, they are not fooled any longer. They do not believe any longer in the truth of those who speak of division, hostility, control of resources, and the advantages of war. These forces are certainly disorganized and puzzled. However, on a planetary level, at the level of the heart, there begins to arise, as this group was speaking of earlier, a feeling that is growing throughout all of the continents and all of the populations of your Earth. There is a growing knowledge that humankind is truly one. There is a growing awareness among ordinary, everyday people that the leaders that have been given power have misused it and are not to be trusted. This basic breakthrough is recent and is indeed a product of many groups such as this one which have attempted to speak their truth with power throughout the last 40 to 50 of your years. Great waves of entities have come among you and have begun to remember who they are. They have shared humor, art, stories and songs. They have lived lives that have inspired many. They have loved in ways that are as individual points of light that have begun to anchor, in a very real way, fourth density values even in the apparently hostile fields of your civilizations. We are as those who represent your ties with the larger family of the creation of the Creator. We have an energy that this instrument would perceive as feminine. The balancing energy that is critical at this time in anchoring the love and the light of the One Creator for this passage for Gaia is the Goddess energy, shall we say. We attempt not to use words that have emotional overtones. 
It is very difficult to find a non-emotion written word for the creator that indicates the essential balance of the feminine energy which is the dynamic opposite of those forces which may be described by gazing at what this instrument would call the Old Testament creator, the Yahweh or Jehovah figure from your Old Testament of your Bible. The energy of Muhammad the Prophet and the one creator named Allah are equally energies of a masculine, towering and authoritative nature. There was a time upon your sphere when this energy was appropriate. That time is long past. Yet those who have incarnated, from Atlantis to Babylon to Rome and so forth, have tried again and again and again to hold on to this increasingly sterile and unproductive creator energy that is what this instrument would call yang in nature, exemplifying aggression and control, those things that, in the process of evolution, have become representative of service to self rather than service to others. You may observe many figures which have attempted to express this feminine energy. The one known as Jesus, the one known as Mary, the one known as Quan Yin, and many others have expressed that Yin creator energy which is all compassionate, all loving, and all understanding, all inclusive and without the faculty of adhering judgment. Our hope, as a confederation, then, is to rest in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator within the inner planes of this planet, which this instrument has often laughingly called the parking garage. Many of those who come from elsewhere within the creation dwell now within resting portions or parking garages of your inner planes, in the sub-plane which is resonant with our vibrations. We rest here with many allies, those essences of all of your densities, first, second, third and so forth, which animate and enliven your inner planes and help to create a fruitful earth plane for those within third density at this time. We are not comfortable in going into our planetary origins or those lessons which we have learned on our way to being who we are and where we are, for in many cases part of the awakening process for people such as yourselves is becoming aware of the incredible connections with a very substantial family group that takes in inner planes and outer planes and all densities of this octave in its system of family relationships, alliances and spiritually based relationships. The interconnectedness of not only our group, but our connections with each of you cannot be overemphasized. The plight of your planet is in its lack of, what this instrument would call, the hundredth monkey effect, up until this moment in time. There are a very few of your entities which have successfully moved through the process of choice and have chosen polarity. A very few of these entities will graduate fourth density negative, that is service to self. There is a larger, but still quite small group in relationship to the total population of your planet which has awakened and, by making the choices that they have made, become very viable candidates for graduation into fourth density, positive earth in service to others. They will continue as pioneers of fourth density here on earth and so far, those two populations have succeeded or potentially are on the point of succeeding, as they naturally pass through the gates into larger life and go through the graduation process. Is, however, an enormous number of entities who have been unable, so far, fully to awaken to who they are or why they are here. That is why wanderers have come among you and that is why we have come into the wings, shall we say, to wait our turn to speak through instruments such as this one, in hopes of helping somewhat to call people to remember, to awakening and to becoming part of that conscious portion of planet Earth which can form into first a social complex and then a social memory complex as the graduation is moved through. The plight is very dear to our hearts, as it is dear to the hearts of wanderers and those earth natives who have awakened at this time. It is as though you are extremely close to developing a large enough group of groups of entities which, together, remember who they are. But they are on the verge of being able to firm into crystals that choose to vibrate, as one, the love and the light of the one infinite creator. When this is done with enough mass of intelligent, conscious, choice-making entities joining in, there is a speeding up or a multiplication effect. 
The crystal that each of you is can choose to become a great deal more powerful as commonalities merge entities into groups and those groups into light sources. The great challenge, then, is to be a force in helping people to wake up without in any way infringing upon their free will. The choice to leave the precincts of fear and to step forward boldly into the unknown territory of unconditional love, release of judgment, and the embrace of all entities, is formidable. The habit of doing so is not there. If you succeed and we succeed in creating that hundredth monkey effect, there is the opportunity in these next few years of awakening a larger number of your peoples to their possibilities and of bringing people fairly rapidly into a state where they are able to graduate. It is a possibility that has an increasing probability vortex. All of you and all of those who are awakening at this time have a tremendous potential to change the face of your planet and to help many, many entities to take hold of who they truly are. We can only say with great humility that we are very glad to be a part of this effort and we thank each of you who has dedicated the life experience to the awakening of Earth and its peoples. It truly does begin with each of you and this is a time when a relatively small number of entities can make a pivotal difference in the harvest. It is the heart of our message to all and that is that the work that you came here to do is work upon yourself. You are an individual. You are a member of the group of rangers. You are a member of the tribe of humankind and you are a member of the creative principle. When you act, you act for and by yourself and yet, at the same time, you act as a ranger and as a human and as the creator. All of these aspects of yourself are equally true. The aspect upon which you consciously can do work is the individual aspect. We would encourage you, therefore, to work within yourself, bringing yourself each day and each moment to the most sharp focus you can, to the highest tuning that you can carry in a stable and conscious manner, to the highest picture of dedication and service that you are comfortably able to achieve. You cannot know, nor does it matter, that you are, at the same time as you work on yourself, working on your group, the rangers, working on your tribe of humankind and working as the creator. It is not necessary that you see into these deeper and wider parts of yourself. It is important simply to keep the focus of consciousness bright so that you are a candle. We have said many times through this instrument that it would seem that one candle is a very weak thing, yet one candle can be seen for well over a mile if a line of sight is unobstructed. And a candle in the darkness is hope. So you represent, knowingly, one person and one process and one offering of love to the infinite creator, yet you also are the candle that the wind cannot snuff out, that the darkness cannot overcome, and that no amount of denial by those who would embrace the dark can deny. You exist, a point of light and love. Simply know that as you do your work, as you breath in love and breath it out again, consciously blessing that energy as it moves through you, you are affecting your group, your tribe, and the Creator itself. We encourage each of you to be fearless in seeking the truth, in seeking the heart of yourself, in seeking the One Creator. We greatly encourage you at this time to bloom as the true flowers of your people that you are. Trust in your beauty and your goodness and in your nature. At this time we would leave this group and this instrument, as we found you, in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. We are humble before you and we thank you with all our hearts for this opportunity to share. We are known to you as the principle of Quo. Adonai.